Hey guys, it's Sasha. Google announced their Q3 results last night and they were not good. In fact, some parts of the earnings were really pretty bad. And this morning, Google's trading 8% down as the markets opened, the share price has dived below $100. And in this video, I wanted to go into these numbers in some detail, explain exactly what happened in the Q3 earnings, show you the bad stuff, but then also show you some of the good stuff because yes, there was some good stuff among all of that as well. I'll share the key takeaways from the earnings call and then I will share my updates to the valuation for Google. And yes, the worsening macro environment does mean that my target price for Google has dropped. I will explain why and by how much. And I actually made a whole video about why companies whose revenue is heavily based on ads are likely to get hit hard two days ago. And here we are, Google is the first in line getting absolutely smashed. I will link that video in the description below if you want to watch it after. So let's quickly go over the earnings. Google's total revenue in Q3 was $69.1 billion, which was 6.1% up year on year. And this was lower than the market expectations. There were two main reasons why the revenue was low. The first reason is the more obvious. The ad business is really suffering from the macroeconomic environment. I talked about this in that video two days ago, remember link in the description and at the end of the video if you want to watch it. But in short, ad revenues on YouTube and on websites that run Google ads have fallen sharply in the last few months and are continuing to fall. Companies are tightening their belts and it's affecting advertising revenue. Google didn't really say it this way and generally avoided putting it as bluntly as I am saying now for obvious reasons. They did though mention on the call a couple of times that some advertisers have pulled back from spend on YouTube and on search and it was pretty low key. The second reason for the drop was foreign exchange. A lot of Google's revenue is earned outside the United States. And in the last few months, the US dollar has strengthened significantly versus almost every other currency. Ruth Porat, Google CFO, repeated on the earnings call multiple times the point that is also at the top of the earnings release. Revenues for Google will be up 11% instead of six if you take out the impact of foreign exchange. Although 11% is still low. The breakdown of the revenue is critical. Google search made $39.5 billion which is 4.2% up on the same quarter last year, and YouTube ads fell by 1.9% to just over $7 billion. However, the story here is actually worse than it looks. Here are the revenues for Google search and YouTube over the last few quarters. You can see that Google search fell 2.8% compared to last quarter, which is a really bad result in itself. But even worse, Google search revenue in Q3 was lower than in Q1. And in Q1 is typically by far the lowest quarter of the year for general advertising spend. And YouTube also looks ugly, down 3.7% quarter on quarter. And you can see that the trend of the last six quarters just does not look great. The revenue hasn't moved anywhere. But on the other hand, there are three important mitigating factors. The impact of foreign exchange is significant. It means that the numbers for the last two quarters are a lot lower than they would otherwise be. Second, Revenues on social media platforms, including YouTube, went absolutely bananas during COVID. You can see that YouTube in Q4 2019, the last quarter before COVID, made $4.7 billion in revenue. But in Q4 2020, it went up to $6.9 billion, 46% up. In Q4 2021, it was $8.6 billion, another 25% up. So this year, we are lapping not one, but two years of very high cumulative growth. And growth on YouTube was highest for Google during COVID, hence why YouTube is seeing a drop right now as we're reverting back to normal. And then on top of all of that, remember we are sitting in the middle of the highest inflation 42 years. Stock market is down over 20% this year. It was down 25% during Q3. We have an energy crisis, a supply chain crisis, a food crisis, a financial crisis, pretty much every crisis you can think of going on. So when you layer these macro factors on top of each other and what companies are doing in response, spending less, being more careful with money, it is not surprising that Google is seeing a hit. Other companies are not going to be immune. I am sure we're going to see this story continue through disappointing results for other companies in the coming days. If you look further down in the press release, you will see the total earnings broken down by geographical region, which is useful to interpret some of it. And it really does help explain the performance in more detail. The table at the top compares Q3 to the same quarter last year. And here you can see that if you exclude the currency exchange factor, EMEA, Europe, Middle East and Africa grew by 11%, Asia Pacific grew by 
8%, US grew by 12%, and other Americas by 17%, which is not too bad, all things considered. But then the table below shows you that compared to Q2, the previous quarter, the numbers fell, even if you kick out the foreign exchange factor. So we're seeing the macro affecting things here on a smaller timescale. But going back to the revenues, Every cloud has a silver lining, and so does Google Cloud. Google Cloud made $6.9 billion, almost 10% of the total revenue, which is a great result. It is growing very fast at a time when companies are cutting their spending. It is 38% up year on year, and amazingly, Google Cloud is up 9.4% compared to Q2. Google Cloud is really delivering the goods and revenue. However, Google Cloud is still technically loss-making on an operating basis. Basis. The margin is improving, but still sits at minus 10%. Now, Ruth briefly mentioned on the call that the biggest increase in costs for Google overall was in their data center. Google has been upgrading their own platform. Google has been investing significantly in the Google Cloud environment, uh, investing more than usual back into the business. And when you look at the cost for Google, you can see that cost of revenue and R&D have both ballooned. Now, Google has been hiring a lot of staff over the last 12 months as well, and that is the other big reason why costs have recently gone up. Google did introduce a hiring freeze briefly in July, but then cancelled it in September and is now hiring more employees on top of the ones they've already hired for the Google Cloud business in particular. And you can see that the number of employees is up from 150,000 to over 186,000 in just one year. That is a very significant increase, which indicates Google is very confident of some of its big bets paying off. Google is planning to hire even more people. Now, I noticed one thing on the balance sheet in these results that I wanted to point out. Here is the Q3 balance sheet overlaid on top of the Q2 version. And you can see that a huge $5 billion turned up on the goodwill line for Google in Q3, a big move in one quarter, especially given there weren't any major acquisitions during the quarter. And you can also see that multiple securities have dropped by 13 billion, a pretty big move. 4 billion of that 13 turned up in the cash pile, which is now sitting at almost $22 billion, and the rest offset that goodwill write down. Now, the cash flow statement shows you that $28.7 billion worth of marketable securities matured or were sold in the quarter. A somewhat typical amount for Google in a quarter, it varies up and down, but you can then see that Google only bought $17 billion worth of new securities, and that is much lower than normal. Google didn't expressly sell a bunch of their securities into cash. They didn't go and get rid of their securities to try to you know, prop up the business. What they chose to do is to replace the maturing ones with new ones for this quarter presumably in order to go and make sure that the balance sheet looks healthy ahead of a potential economic downturn. Now, on the earnings call, Google kept focusing on one point, YouTube Shorts. They introduced YouTube Shorts because TikTok turned up and started stealing Google's lunch with short-form video content. But since introducing Shorts, Google hasn't yet figured out how to properly monetize it. And on the call, Sundar Pichai said that Google is working hard on improving the monetization of Shorts. The obvious problem is that people don't want to watch two 45 second ads before a 20 second video. So there is very much a reliance on people watching a lot of shorts and distributing the ads across them. Now, there was one question on the earnings score from Brian Nowak and Morgan Stanley, which I wanted to play to you. The question has two parts, one on the massive hiring spree and one on YouTube shorts. And I thought it was an excellent question, especially because it stumped Google and they gave a really bad couple of answers to it. Your question, please, Brian Nowak. Thanks for taking my questions. I have two. The first one uh, for, for Sundar or Ruth. You know, Sundar, just to go back to the, the comment about earlier in the quarter becoming 20% more efficient. I thought tonight your comment on investing responsibly over the long term of being responsive to the environment is helpful. But if I look at sort of the Excel sheet, I think you'll have added about 51,000 new people to the company since the start of last year. Can you give us some examples of internal KPIs or quantifiable analysis you're running just to ensure you're generating ROI for investors from all your hiring as you sort of run through these analyses? That's the first one. The first question is pointing out a big inconsistency in Google's quarterly updates, what they say to their shareholders. On the one hand, Google is saying that they're becoming much more efficient and overall, over the long term, their costs are coming down. It's kind of true. But on the other hand, they've just hired 40% more staff since the start of last year, which is a crazy number for what is already a very big company, a lot of new employees joining in a very short period of time, especially as revenues during this period have flatlined and profits have taken a massive dump. 
profits have taken a massive dump because costs have gone up. You know, costs associated with hiring 50,000 more employees. Here is Google's answer. Uh, Brian, I, I think, uh, look, I think we gave uh, some, uh, we've been clear that we are going to moderate our pace of hiring uh, going into, 20, uh, into Q4 as well as uh, 2023. Uh, I think, you know, we are, uh, you know, seeing a lot of opportunities across a whole set of areas. And every time, uh, you know, talent is the most precious resource. So uh, we are constantly working to make sure everyone we've brought in, um, you know, is is working on the most important things as a company and particularly so. And that's a lot of what uh, sharpening our focus has been about. Uh, we are re reviewing projects, you know, at all scales, uh, pretty granularly uh, to make sure uh, we have the right plans there and and based on that, the right resourcing and, and making course corrections. And this will be an ongoing thing. Uh, it is something we'll continue doing uh, going into 23 as well. Unfortunately, Sundar completely did not answer the question at all. Pretty much ignored the ROI aspect altogether, gave a near, near, near kind of answer that didn't really say anything, and just doubled down on saying that Google will keep on hiring in Q3 and through 2023. As an investor, this is a double-edged sword. Sure, some of these employees that are being hired during a market downturn could be the catalyst, could be the cause of Google revenues and profits exploding as we come out of this financial crisis into next year, into the year after, and so on, with new products, with improving existing products. But it's also pointing to Google taking on a massive load of risk and placing very, very heavy bets when many other companies are doing the opposite and playing a much more cautious game instead. And if the big bets for Google do not come through, this hiring could really backfire. Now, the next question, also from Brian Nowak. And the second one, uh, Philip, just on shorts, are you seeing shorts lead to incremental time spent from those users, or is it more so you're, you're seeing the time shift from other forms of YouTube over to shorts? Another amazing question, are Google Shorts cannibalizing other YouTube content? Because shorts are popular and a lot of people do watch them. But is that coming at the expense of the rest of YouTube? Because the rest of YouTube is where the money is made. Yes, and to the second part uh, of the question, as we discussed before, we've always focused on building a great user and uh, creator experience first, uh, followed by increasing monetization over time. Um, we, we continue to experience a slight headwind to revenues uh, as Shorts viewership grew as a percentage of total YouTube watch time. And uh, as I alluded to earlier, uh, the initial progress on Shorts monetization has been encouraging and we're focused on closing the monetization gap between Shorts and uh, long-form content on YouTube over time. Uh, and uh, more specifically, consumers are uh, increasingly, increasingly consuming short-form video. Uh, we're seeing this across multiple platforms, uh, including YouTube. Uh, and as I said earlier, shorts are being watched uh, by one and a half billion plus logged-in users uh, every month. So Philip Schindler pretty much admits that YouTube shorts are stealing market share from the rest of YouTube. And Google is hoping that over time, however long that is, whatever that means, they might bridge the gap between revenue for long form content and shorts. I think the answer here was not at all good. Pretty bad, in fact, because it's suggesting that YouTube jumped into competing with TikTok and Shorts headfirst without really thinking through what it means for the business, whether it actually makes sense to do it, whether focusing on long-form content maybe would have been a better long-term call. Now, they are scratching their heads at the moment, trying to figure out how can they actually make money from Shorts, especially given that Shorts are taking eyeballs off the content that does make money, the long-form stuff. And revenue on YouTube overall is getting hit as a result. So. On the back of all of this, I have updated my model and the key differences are here in the year on year revenue growth assumptions. As we are seeing the macroeconomic situation deteriorate and as we saw Q3 numbers fall below expectations, I have dropped the average growth estimates for 2022. Obviously, we only have Q4 left in the year, so these numbers should come out pretty close. But then I have also baked in a relatively slow two year round backup from here for Google Search and YouTube before decaying these numbers through to 2027. And with Google Cloud, I am continuing the growth that they are seeing, but decaying the rate of that growth every single year from here on out. Now on costs, 
we have this blip this year where they have increased somewhat as a proportion of revenue. And I have upped the projection for the next year as well across the board, but then continue the gradual lowering of costs in percent terms from 2024 onwards, except for the cost of revenue, which I've kept as a constant 44%. And looking at the final valuation, I have updated all the numbers in here. The total number of shares has dropped slightly as Google's buying back shares. The discount rate is 10% long term. EBITDA multiple in 2027 is set to 15. Long term growth rate is at 4.5% for the perpetual calculation. And you can see that I have a target price of $120 using the perpetuity approach and $167 using the EBITDA multiple. Now, I feel that a skew towards the latter for me makes more sense given that the business is going to be in a very different place in five years time. It is already somewhat mature. And this means that I am dropping my target from $180 to $160. A relatively big drop given what we're seeing happen with the economy overall. As always, I have shared this model, this result with my patrons and channel members in the community first before even starting to make this video. Feel free to join the community. The link to the Patreon is in the description. Now for me, Google continues to be a very solid long-term investment. There are definitely issues, and there aren't any companies that don't have issues. YouTube is getting hit strongly, and advertising revenues are generally down, probably will continue being down because of the macro environment. But I continue to see a lot of potential in the stock, including the growth of Google Cloud. The upside for me is still big, around 65% on today's share price at today's valuation. And there are other companies out there that have seen their share price hit a lot more than Google, where the potential upside could be higher. I do like the robust optics for Google though, and a relatively lower risk profile, which is why I personally hold a long position in the stock. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you guys later.